Greetings, dear viewers. Last year, my video on Lost Media was a modest success, especially for something very obscure. Lost Media has always creeped me out, yet fascinates me. Today, I will be revisiting the topic with seven more obscure pieces of Lost Media. Some of these are even more obscure than my first list, so without further ado... Rick and Morty is an adult animated television series airing on Adult Swim. None of the actual episodes of the show are considered lost, nor any merchandise, but rather a series of animated advertisements featuring the show's characters promoting Subway is. In these shorts, the titular characters touted themselves as the new Jared, referring to the infamous former mascot of Subway, Jared Fogle. The ads came close to being aired, but were pulled last minute due to Fogle's arrest in 2015. Only four commercials were made. Legally, show co-creator Justin Roiland is not allowed to leak the advertisements, however he has discarded thumb drives containing the ads in different locations. Elf Bowling was a low-budget animated Christmas movie based on the video games of the same name. Despite poor reception, there was originally planned to be a sequel of the film entitled Elf Bowling 2 The Great Halloween Pumpkin Heist, the original evidence of this being in a promo video created for distributors of the first film, which was uploaded to YouTube. No screenshots, footage, or any real evidence of the work being put into the project has resurfaced. The film would likely have been produced if the first had performed well, but it missed the mark by a large margin. From these circumstances, it can be inferred that the film had never actually began production, but merely was an idea thrown out there akin to something of a what-if moment. Dingo Pictures is an animation company responsible for the creation of low-budget, low-quality animated films that often are mimicking the concepts of popular Disney films releasing at the time. They even worked with Phoenix Games to have their films ported to the PlayStation 1, 2, DS, and Wii, oddly enough. Despite the low quality of their films, they've developed somewhat of a cult following. One of their films, Sing Meet Aladdin, is currently the only film of theirs to be completely lost, including the original German version. The title translates to Sing with Aladdin, and is a compilation of songs present in the Dingo Pictures film just titled Aladdin, albeit with a man pointing to the lyrics of each song sporadically placed throughout, as well as a narrator interspersed into different sections. The film was apparently packed in with copies of their other film, Der Konig Der Tiere. That's all the information I was able to obtain about this film. The film has a trailer and a small clip uploaded on YouTube, but everything else is completely lost and barely anything is known about this film. Dairy Queen is a chain of fast food restaurants specializing in serving ice cream. In 2008, they attempted to appeal to a 8-12 to year old audience by creating DQs.com, a site in which players can create an avatar and traverse a virtual world, which had its own storyline of rescuing lost DQs, which are these little things that resemble the DeviantArt mascot. The game was in a similar vein to Club Penguin and was active until it was shut down abruptly in 2013, where it was replaced with only three Flash games until 2017, where it was completely shut down. This reminds me of a similar, much more popular game called Club BK, which was another virtual world type Flash game. Club BK I remember distinctly as it was quite the fleshed out game considering that it was meant to only promote Burger King. The game even had tie-in events and other mini-games with other brands such as Iron Man 2 and Spongebob. Despite its larger presence though, it doesn't seem to be that well known and I seriously doubt anyone has saved the game. Club BK ran from July 10th, 2008 until November 9th, 2011, where it was changed to BK Crown, which completely stripped all of the avatar and overworld elements of the game and just left the mediocre minigames. Few things made me more infuriated as a kid than that. Perhaps this entry isn't so much obscure, but it is quite odd for the amount of dedication that the Lost Media Wiki has put into this. Billy Mays was an American marketing pitchman mostly known for his OxyClean infomercials. Of course, he did more than just OxyClean, being present in many different infomercials, many of which have been lost. A relatively long wiki page has been dedicated to the lost infomercials Mays was present in, and perhaps this is the most obscure and odd fact about this.
Game Grumps is a Let's Play YouTube channel currently starring Aaron Hansen and Dan Avedon. They are by no means secretive that some of the content they've created just simply does not go up on YouTube, as they've mentioned this multiple times. The first was Aaron and John Jafari's playthrough of Conker's Bad Fur Day. This one was unreleased due to their dry commentary as the game was purely dialogue based. A similar incident occurred with their initial playthrough of Demon Crest, in which the two hosts got into a heated argument during their session, leading to the series being scrapped and redone. A four hour long session of Mario Party 4 had its audio recorded but not the gameplay, leading to it being scrapped, though the grumps are open to the idea of releasing the audio one day. John and Aaron recorded their playthrough of Super Metroid that had been lost due to Aaron's laptop dying on him, leading to that one also being redone. Some Sonic 06 footage was lost part way in, so the playthrough had to be redone. Ugh, that's gotta be harsh. Nickelodeon Guts and Castle Crashers both had to be redone due to capture and audio issues respectively. Lastly, the original playthrough of Strider 2 was lost altogether. Zoop was a video messaging app in which the app recorded an audio clip of the user and would lip sync the audio to an animated 3D model of popular characters such as Sid the Sloth, Slimer, and by far the most notable, Pac-Man. The platform gained meme status as it was used to create videos with odd, surreal overtones for comedic purposes such as Pac-Man memes where someone makes an off-color joke with a Pac-Man pun. The official Zoob Cam app was released in 2012 and stopped being supported in 2017. The reason for the shutdown hasn't been stated, but it was likely because it was too costly to maintain with all the licensed properties that had been attached. I'm a little saddened to see this app be lost though as the Pac-Man meme that it started has been one of my all-time favorites and it wouldn't have existed without this app.